Hi, my name is Peter Young, and I want to talk to you today about the work that my uh, research group at Colorado State University does in robust and learning control for complex systems. So I'm a professor in the electrical and computer engineering department. I'm also an investigator at CSU's Energy Institute. And the areas that I work in are feedback control systems, and in particular, something called robust and learning control, which I'll explain in a little bit. And there's a lot of application areas for this stuff. Uh, and most recently, uh, I've, those application areas for me have largely been in um, sustainable and clean energy systems. Okay, so what do we mean by robust control? Well, I always love this quote from Uncle Remus. I certainly won't attempt to do the accent, but the quote says, it ain't what you don't know in life that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure, but what ain't so. So what does that mean for control systems? Well, if you look at this classical feedback control system illustrated on the left here, uh, P is meant to be the physical plant, right? And K is the controller for that plant. And then we do our usual feedback control loop. So the controller K is designed based on a knowledge of P, but remember, P is just a mathematical model of the real physical plant, so it won't be perfectly accurate. And what can happen in high performance control systems is that the differences between the real physical system and your model of the physical system, that's what you know for sure, but what ain't so. And if you're not careful, it can cause the controller to lose performance or even go unstable. So robust control, illustrated on the right, uses a lot of advanced mathematical tools, and it is a very mathematical topic. I'm not going to get into those details here, uh, but it tries to deliver performance despite the fact that there are uncertainties or unknowns in your plant model. So the physical plant model P now has these unknown uh, deltas. Okay, so how does that compare with learning control? Well, in learning control, what you try and do is uh, essentially intelligent trial and error. The controller sees the inputs and outputs to the plant, and based on that, combining um, the two, you can get something control. called robust learning. And control. so, and the idea here is as follows. I start out with some initial design and using robust control, I'm able to describe a region where if the controller parameters stay in this region, I'm going to have uh, at least stability and reasonable performance. And then I allow the controller to adapt and I can recalculate the region and so on. And in this way, I'm able to ideally achieve performance like this system on the right. So I started out with an initial design and a conventional learning control would adapt over time and would eventually reach a very good endpoint. But in the middle, it would try out designs that were potentially catastrophic. If you were running this real time on a physical system, that could be instability, right? Whereas the new system can run real time online, adapting while it's running and learning while it's running all the time maintaining safe, stable performance and still reach this kind of optimized endpoint that you get from the learning system. So that's kind of robust and learning control in a nutshell. That's also enough mathematics uh, for one short talk. So let me now talk about application areas because um, that's kind of really interesting. So look, here's one application area. You've probably heard a lot about um, biofuels. Uh, and so one way that you can attempt to uh, make biofuels is with algae. It turns out that for various uh, economic reasons, this is kind of much more viable than a lot of other approaches. So how does making biofuels work? Well, let me give you the 30 second explanation. When we breathe, what we do is take in oxygen, burn sugars to create energy and kick out carbon dioxide as a waste product. Photosynthesis in plants does the complement of that process. You take in carbon dioxide, you take in energy from the sun and you create sugars which is, that's your stored energy, and you give off oxygen as a byproduct. So in this process, the carbon dioxide is important because you need the right amount of carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. Now, if you put too little carbon dioxide into this photobioreactor, then the photosynthesis won't be efficient. If you put too much in, then the excess carbon dioxide makes carbonic acid in the water, and that makes the water too acidic, and the algae don't like that. So there's a complicated feedback control system that's trying to deliver just the right amount of CO2. And you can see here the sort of comparison between the green and the blue lines is the sort of theoretic predicted amount of CO2 that we need versus the amount that uh, uh, in practice was actually uh, absorbed by this system. So that's one example of where feedback control systems can be applied. Another one is um, illustrated here, natural gas engines. 
If you use natural gas engines to power a microgrid, um, it turns out that the rotational speed of the engine is directly related to the frequency of the microgrid. In the US, that's 60 hertz. So you have to maintain the speed of the natural gas engine uh, very precisely in order, to, uh, in order for it to be useful for driving a generator for a microgrid. And on the right here, you can see, oh, sorry, on the left here, you can see conventional control under certain disturbances has very big speed deviations. And so this would mean that, that this system couldn't be used for a microgrid. Using our more advanced control strategies here, you can see we're able to achieve much tighter speed control. See on the left here, the deviations are maybe up to 60 RPM, whereas on the right here, they're maybe less than three. So that's kind of a very quick look at the type of things we do in my research group. And feedback control systems uh, has pretty much all the different facets in it, whether you're interested in sort of advanced mathematical sort of system theoretical tools, whether you're interested in sort of algorithmic software tools, whether you're interested in sort of hardware and practical applications. We do all of them um, in my research at, group at CSU on feedback control systems. And so if you're interested in that, then please get in touch with me.